guys. Well, it's really great to be sharing with you here today. I love coming here. You're just such a warm, welcoming um, congregation. And it's good to see you. You've got a new fella, eh? Hey? Yeah. Did the old fella stop working? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today, and look, first of all, for those of you that don't know me, so I presume that you all know me, my name's Vicky Marnie, and I work for Global Mission Partners, and we call that GMP. And I'm the Partnership Coordinator for Queensland, and Vanuatu is my specialty. Many of you who have listened to me speak before know that I love Vanuatu. I'm actually not going to talk about Vanuatu today. I'm going to talk about something that um, you have supported for a while, I'm also elected to Churches of Christ Queensland Council, so I sit on the council and this is my second term, which I'm enjoying very much working with the local churches. So when I was reflecting on this weekend, Australia Day, I thought about the diversity of our country, the people and our geography, because it is so different. I was born in Melbourne, I grew up in um, the suburbs, I went to school with the Wogs the Greek kids and the Italian kids. A very, and that's what we called them back then, and that was my own way to say that. <laughs> so my growing up, my childhood was enriched with fantastic fish and chips and the local green grocer with exotic fruits. Um, so thinking about where we've come from and where we are today, in this past week, I had the opportunity through my work with World Day Prayer to sit in on a video conference with women from all around the world. And I just find this amazing that I can sit in my home office at 6 a.m. in the morning and talk to people in Paris at 8 p.m. at night the day before. Or I can speak to women in America. At the beginning of our session, we shared a little bit about our countries. I didn't actually share because I felt by the end of it that I really couldn't say much about our country because the lady from France, she shared about the impact of the Yellow Vest protesters. The lady from the USA talked about the government shutdown and the impacts on their community that will be long going for many years to come. Barbados shared about how their economy is wrecked and their dollar is worth nothing. We spoke about and prayed for Zimbabwe because they're the focus of World Day Prayer next year. Their economy is wrecked after the last election. There is no food on the shelves, there's no petrol, their currency is just worth nothing. GMP has a number of projects in Zimbabwe and we have currently um, put on hold showers of blessings because they can't actually get the money out of the bank to go and dig the wells. Um, KCV, Children's Orphanage um, has not yet been affected in that way. So we would ask that you pray for those projects in that country and the people of Zimbabwe. Sri Lanka is also in political mess. They have two prime ministers where some countries don't even have one yet. Beirut is under civil unrest as it has been for decades. So by the time these ladies shared, I really felt that we do live in the lucky country. It may not be the perfect country, but we are in the lucky country. That we haven't experienced any of these things. And I know that currently we're undergoing a dry season of drought, but you know, one day it will rain. In some of these countries, it never rains. <laughs> so I felt very blessed and privileged in the position and the place that I were in. So thinking through how GMP impacts the world and the people that come to this country, we've spoken to before about the buckets. Sometimes mission starts with a bucket of cash or resources that we give to somebody in need. Sometimes we set off with an empty bucket to bring back new experiences. Well, sometimes we turn that bucket upside down in the dirt next to our neighbours and listen to their stories. And through that, we're able to build relationships and provide assistance. So that got me to thinking about South Sudan. 
and how, from this land that we're in here, how do we get to, to be supporting and building projects in South Sudan in such a faraway place, which is culturally is just so different to us. And I wanted to thank you for your support of your child sponsorship. Since 2012, you have been um, supporting the Emmanuel Children's Program in South Sudan. So the history of how we got there. This came about from the South Sudanese refugees um, coming to South Australia approximately 20 years ago and joining with the McGill Church of Christ. Their leaders approached GMP to ask us to support their community in South Sudan. At that time, they were in dire trouble with um, famine and we've formally partnered with South Sudan since 2010. So South Sudan is a landlocked country gaining independence in 2011 after decades of fighting. There's no infrastructure, maternal and infant mortality rates are the highest in the world. Out of the request for help was born Emmanuel's Children's Program. The first year of the program was really about just giving orphan kids that had been displaced through the civil war and activity one meal a day. That was successful. Children that had been displaced from the area called Awil, which is in the north, which is near the border of Sudan, um, were placed back into the communities in which they came because they do have some roots and they do have some, maybe some relationship within that area. Those children then were gathered under a tree every day to receive a meal. From there grew a, a, a school which was a, called a UTS, under tree school. So today we feed over 400 children every day. We provide them with an education. They now have buildings where they can have their classes so they move from under the, under the tree. We also provide health care to them as well. This is a picture of the kids taking classes under the tree. So we're about to enter our third three-year cycle of a program. And this program is about sustainability. So it's about giving the caregivers of the children a way to earn an income, which is through goats. The community is also involved in the program, so they have helped build the school, build fencing around the school to stop um, animals coming in and destroying any crops that they might grow. So last time I was here, I talked a lot of bull about bulls. <laughs> so now I'm going to talk a bit about these goats. So what's the why behind the goats? So every caregiver, so the kids don't live in an orphanage situation, they live with a family because that's considered to be a better model today, in today's world to have children placed with a family for care. The caregivers are given two she goats and one he goat and they're also trained and given support for the first 12 months to grow a business out of that. So that will provide income through milk and additional food for the family. After 12 months time, it is envisioned that they would then will be able to pay school fees. Now there are some checks and measures in here that kids still need to go to school and can't be around herding goats all the time. So if kids miss school, the goats will be taken off the caregivers. The, in these households, there are about 10 and 12 people. So the goats will go to the household to help strengthen that whole household and then the whole community. So it's about becoming sustainability and for them not to be relying on us for even a day. So they've grown in capacity, so one day they will be able to care for themselves completely. When I was looking through these pictures of the goats, you will notice that practically everybody has a smile on their face because they're really happy about receiving their goats. 
and going to really cheap. One of those coats cost about $90 Australian, which is really very expensive, I think, for a goat. Part of Emmanuel Program is also a community project, a building sustainability within that community. And one of those was the Oxen Plow project, which you supported last year. So it's about the community enabling themselves to be self-sufficient and finding a better way in life. And one of these projects, this is born out of the last six months and last year, is a peace project. That's where bringing together community leaders, men and women, young and old, to come together to learn about peace. Being in decades of civil strife and war, if you have a conflict with somebody, the answer is you just don't kill them. It's about teaching them a different way of life. And many of the skills that we take for granted have been lost. So through the peace building, some of the things that they are teaching are emotions and empathy, human rights, problem solving, and also talking about their emotional history. So teaching them a different way to do life than arguing. So this is open to any member of the community and all tribes. And particularly the young people are involved in this because they've only never known war. They don't know about conflict resolution or a different way. None of this would be possible without the real Church of Christ and the Churches of Christ in Australia and churches such as you. By supporting the kids at Emmanuel, you can see now how it has grown to be much more than just feeding kids, but being a real community project that gives hope for the future. So on behalf of the community in the wheel, I thank you for your support and your faithful support since 2012. If you want to keep in touch, up to date with what they're doing over there or any other of our projects, you can join us on Facebook, Twitter, or if you're not into that, you can get the In Partnership magazine sent to you newsletter on a monthly basis. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.